Wet, swampy soil is often perceived by us as mud and disorder, but sometimes it can remarkably preserve something extraordinary. We've gathered for you 20 videos where these finds are brought to light. You will see ancient bog mummies and butter that is 2,000 years old. So sit back comfortably and enjoy viewing. Unexpectedly, an entire imperial army was found. 8,100 terracotta statues of warriors and their horses were discovered during earthworks in the Chinese province of Xi'an. In 1974, farmers were digging a well, but suddenly, a regular workday turned into a new page in history textbooks. What they unearthed would later be called the Terracotta Army. A vast collection of life-sized clay soldiers created to guard the mausoleum of the Qin Dynasty Emperor in Xi'an. Buried in the mud, this army was part of the burial complex of China's first emperor, who initiated the unification of the country and the construction of the Great Wall of China. Someone had to accompany him into the afterlife. It's amazing that for more than two millennia, this army stood untouched underground, until the farmer's shovel revealed it to the world. We can only marvel at how far ancient cultures went to immortalize their leaders. The Shipwreck of the Vasa, the battleship of the Swedish fleet, is an impressive maritime event, as grandois as it is absurd. As close as triumph is to tragedy, we can judge by the remains of the richly decorated warship that sank on its first departure in Stockholm Harbor in 1628. An awkward start to demonstrate Swedish naval superiority, isn't it? The ship's design was incredibly ambitious for its time. Two full decks of cannons, a meticulously thought out and decorated deck. The problem was with the construction. The ship was too heavy. There was not enough ballast. And it took only a few minutes to capsize and sink. On its short journey, it took the lives of several hundred people including rescue sailors from neighboring ships. And for more than three centuries, the Vasa lay at the bottom of the harbor, dishonored and forgotten. Only in 1956, through the efforts of marine archaeology, was the 300-year-old wooden ship raised from the seabed, and among the wreckage, several skeletons were discovered. It was an unprecedented event to restore the only surviving monument of the 17th century. In 1890, 43 miles from Yekaterinburg in the Ural Mountains, workers extracting peat from a swamp discovered a gigantic wooden sculpture. This wooden statue astounded them, not only with its size of almost 10 feet, but also the craftsmanship in which it was carved, as well as its age. It was determined that the idol was carved around 150 years ago from a larch tree, and radiocarbon analysis showed that it was created 11,500 years ago in the Mesolithic era. This means the idol is twice as old as the Egyptian pyramids and is one of the oldest wooden sculptures in the world. The swampy terrain played a crucial role in its preservation. The acidic environment with low oxygen content did not destroy but rather petrified the wood. The incredible artifact surviving through a millennia inspires awe the eerie marks on its face and patterns have become a subject of debate and speculation among archaeologists. Some experts believe that the figure carved on it are some form of cipher, possibly even a form of prehistoric writing. An innovative archaeological center in Tuscany made a discovery that could rewrite history. During excavations in the baths near Siena, 24 statuettes, coins, and life-size bronze statues dating back 2,000 years were found. They were remarkably preserved under a layer of mud and became one of the most significant finds in the Mediterranean over the past half century. The gigantic depictions of the ancient Greek god Apollo and the fertility goddess Gaia suggest that this site was for bronze mining, from which they were cast. Also, the variety of found statuettes can tell us about the peaceful coexistence of two cultures in the area, Etruscan and Roman. On an ordinary day in 1952 in Denmark, workers began their shift on their excavators and gathered an unusual harvest. 
they discovered a perfectly preserved human body. It turned out that the mummy was a character from the Iron Age, more than 2,000 years old. Imagine the shock of these workers when they looked into the face of a man deep from the past. This mummy became one of the most incredible finds in European archaeology because of its facial features, hair and even skin of this person were perfectly preserved in texture. Nature helped in the perfect preservation of the body without access to oxygen. Indeed, it seemed like the man was in deep sleep. However, despite the peaceful face, the poor man met a terrible end. His throat was cut so deep that his head almost detached from the body. Could he have been the victim of an ancient ritual? And how to find out what happened in Denmark thousands of years ago? And how many more unusual pieces of evidence are still lying under our feet? Thank you to these excavator operators who found the mummy. If not for you digging, we never would have found it. One of the most intriguing bog finds was discovered in 1950 in Denmark. Residents of the village of Toland were extracting peat from a bog at a depth of about 6.6 .6 feet, stumbling upon a corpse of a man. At first, they thought it was a victim of a recent crime and contacted the police. However, the body was found quite deep and no evidence of murder was found, so the discovery was reported to scientists. In the 1930s, peasants had already found the bodies of ancient people in local bogs, and scientists determined that this body also belonged to the Bronze Age, about 2,300 years old. The mummy was remarkably well-preserved. We can discern his facial expression, stubble and wrinkles, and even minor features tell a story. Scientists even found out what he ate on his last day. It was a porridge made of flax seeds and barley. This speaks of the diet of the ancient tribe and that the man had died at the end of winter. A rope remained around his neck and his tongue was swollen, indicating death by strangulation. Whether he was hanged for a crime or became the victim of a ritual practice in ancient Europe, the tall man remains a subject of interest to archaeologists to this day. This body was found in 1984 in a bog near the hamlet of Lindo Moss in the English county of Cheshire. It was also excellently preserved, but the details of his death were horrifying. Workers were removing stones from under a peat harvesting machine when they noticed something resembling a football. The ball turned out to be the head of a man whose age scientists determined to be in the Bronze Age. Living about 2,000 years ago, and he died at 25 as a result of a merciless execution. The skull was split with three blows, the throat was slit, and a tight rope placed around the neck. This triple method of execution resembles a ritual murder of the ancient Celts, as they worship triads in their tradition. Drowning people in the bogs were also their hallmark. You might ask what kind of nightmare everyday life was for people of the Bronze Age. But such was prehistoric Britain. Ugh. It adds to the horror, one might say. Another thrilling chapter in the history of European bog bodies. In 1890 in the Netherlands, female remains from the Iron Age, about 800 years BC, were discovered. Having lain there for more than 2,000 years in the bog, she retained her individual features. Initially, her reddish hair led scientists to believe that she had been executed as a witch, but it turned out that her hair was dyed by the bog chemicals, as were the remnants of her clothing. At the time of her death, the girl was about 16 years old. She suffered from scoliosis, and her demise was tragic. As in previous cases with bog bodies, the rope of which she was strangled with was still around her neck. The fact that the body was also found in the bog supports the grim hypothesis of ritual murders or forms of sophisticated ancient executions. Another body was discovered in Europe, this time in the bogs of Ireland. In 2003, a peat harvesting combine operator noticed an unusual object under the cutting mechanism. Stopping the machine, he went out to examine and saw human legs sticking out of the mud in a leather sack. This was reported to the curator of the National Museum of Ireland, and here is what a renowned bog body specialist had to say. The well-preserved remains belonged to a person of high status, 
a chieftain or a king, since his hands were meticulously manicured, with his hair styled. Admittedly, this is an atypical appearance for people in the Iron Age, who lived more than 2,000 years ago. The man's diet was predominantly meat. He lived in abundance, but his death was violent. There were wounds on his chest that speaks of ritual murder. The Celts committed this act with the purpose of rejuvenating the Earth Goddess, who required a new spouse, a role symbolically performed by the king. This was a six foot six inch, approximately giant, who was stabbed with a dagger, beheaded, and his body cut in half. Before death, he consumed his last meal, a porridge meal made from seeds, fruits of the earth, but underwent torture. His forearms were drilled with a sharp instrument, and through the wounds, flexible branches were threaded, from which his hands were tied. The body was thrown into the bog, according to customs. It's incredible what treasures can be hidden in the dirt. Here's a splendid example. An astonishing specimen of ancient craftsmanship was discovered in 1891 near the small town of Gunderstrup in Denmark. And it's not just a large cauldron, but a huge mystery that historians are puzzled over. The cauldron dates back to the first century BC, a late period of what's called the Metal Age. It's made of silver and partly gilded, with its walls depicting complex scenes of animal figures and mythical motifs. Its origins remain a subject of debate among historians. Some insist on early Roman era, others on a Celtic origin. Nonetheless, the scenes from these plots are a feast for the eyes and the imagination, and we can see creatures from gods and goddesses to warriors and animals. We can only guess to whether it was a ceremonial item for religious rituals, a military trophy, or simply inexpensive tableware in someone's palace. Quite a cool thing for the interior, even by modern standards, <laughs> let alone for the Iron Age, don't you agree? Imagine stumbling upon an object as ancient and unique as the first map of early astronomy and being able to see the universe through the eyes of our distant ancestors. This happened in 1999 in a muddy field near the town of Nebra in Germany. Hunters found a bronze disc about 12 inches in diameter adorned with gold leaves and containing astronomical symbols, and the discovery became known as the Nebra Sky Disc. The masterpiece from around 1600 BC from the Bronze Age functions as an astronomical map. The gold symbols represent the sun and moon, stars, and even a solar eclipse or full moon. One fragment of the disc is missing, and originally, the find was illegally sold on the black market. Only after it fell into the hands of archaeologists was it restored to its true value. Not only advanced cultures, Greeks and Babylonians, had the knowledge of the cosmos, but also earlier people in the Bronze Age had an understanding of celestial events, or maybe they were told by extraterrestrials. How paradoxical the lottery of life can sometimes be. Some buy tickets for years and win just as much as they spent on them, while someone else, losing garden tools, take a metal detector and find it in their garden, a treasure from the Roman Empire. In 1992, in an English village, a man named Derek Lewis was searching for a lost hammer, but dug up something much more significant. It was a handful of coins, but a vast collection of more than 1,500 Roman gold and silver coins, also finding jewelry and silver tableware, among which were spoons and even a pepper pot one of the most valuable treasures of the Roman Empire period ever found in Britain, dating back to the late 4th or early 5th century AD. Who decided to place this treasure in the ground? Finding treasure in the backyard is the stuff of childhood dreams, but sometimes they come true for those who search. In 2009, an unemployed hobbyist who enjoyed digging around with a metal detector on other people's properties made headlines across England by discovering the largest collection of Anglo-Saxon style coin and silver jewelry. This wasn't just a pot of coins, but 3,500 items from the 7th century including warfare equipment and richly decorated religious artifacts. A collection that made both historians and treasure hunters tremble equally. 
a historic jackpot for any museum. The magnificent Anglo-Saxon art, the intricate craftsmanship with its elaborate patterns. Look at how beautiful these items are and how absurd it is that they were just lying under the ground. However, what to do with treasure of immense historic value? What belongs to the finder and what to the landowner, considering that the treasury was valued at 3.3 million British pounds? In this case, the field owner himself allowed an acquaintance to explore it, and they both received their shares from the government. And the rest of the world can admire the artifacts in the Birmingham Museum and Art Gallery in the city of Stoke-on-Trent. One extravagant lady named Miss Pretty claimed that there was plenty of gold on Sutton Hoo Hill in Suffolk County, and mysterious figures at a seance supposedly told her this. Being a vigorous individual, in 1939, she initiated excavations, and to everyone's amazement, this discovery turned history on its head. Inside the large mound was found a grand burial a burial mound full of gold, coins, weapons, and armor of truly royal scale. And most notably, among was a burial ship, presumably of King Radwald, who lived in the early 7th century AD. Burials on a ship reflect early Anglo-Saxon world traditions, but imagine a 98-foot-long ship whose wooden structure had long rotten away, but the impression was beautifully well-preserved. Inside the decayed hull lay a treasure trove of artifacts of magnificent quality. Look at this helmet. It alone could symbolize the Dark Ages of England's history. The buried body had decomposed due to the soil's acidity, but analysis revealed the presence of phosphate in it, meaning the king's remains were indeed there. In 1984, in the bogs of County Longford in Ireland, an ancient wooden road dating back to the Iron Age was found. Its history began around 148 AD. Due to its mysteriousness, it was nicknamed the Road to Nowhere because its destination could not be discovered. The path itself was meticulously constructed from oak planks, but no one could guess where it led. No traces of settlements, culture, or domestic objects were found nearby. Perhaps this ceremonial path led to a now lost sacred site, or perhaps it was simply a mundane crossing through marshy terrain, but the ancient highway miraculously preserved itself to us to continue guessing its mystery. Two men went to a remote location for fishing, presumably in Australia, and stumbled upon the remains of unknown machinery rotting in a swamp. The photo is labeled a derigable crash, but I'm very puzzled by its size. Do you, friends, truly think this is a derigable rotting in the swamp or perhaps the remains of an extraterrestrial ship or something similar? How many days old is the butter you spread on your sandwich in the morning? Now imagine butter that is 2,000 years old. In 2016, a man in Ireland discovered deposits of ancient butter in a bog. About 22 pounds of real butter were stored in a wooden container all this time. It's not news that bogs represent a unique environment. Low temperature, high acidity, and absence of oxygen are ideal for the conservation of various kinds of historically valuable artifacts. It's not about how many thousands of years people have been producing this product. The question is, how did the butter end up in the bog? One theory suggests it was an offering to the gods or spirits, while the more practical version simply states, that the bog served as an ancient refrigerator for preserving and storing food products. Quite ingenious, right? Millennia ago, there was also domestic technology, only it didn't need to be purchased. Nature itself created all the conditions. As for the shelf life, we won't claim that the butter retained its taste qualities, but as a discovery, this fact is absolutely astonishing. Would you dare to try it? In 1999, tides in Norfolk, England, revealed an unusual formation resembling Stonehenge. The coastal muddy shallows showed a circular complex of 55 oak posts around a central inverted tree trunk. And unlike the more famous stone circles of Stonehenge, this wooden structure gives us an insight into another type of monument and burial ceremonies. 
It is assumed that the circle was a venue for ritual activities, and the inverted tree could symbolize the journey to the afterlife. It may have been the site for a calendrical ritual related to the lunar cycle, but we've yet to learn the true purpose of this intriguing construction. In 2022, a team of researchers led by the University of Michigan volunteered for excavations that provided substantive information about the Ice Age. The skeleton of a mastodon was discovered on private property by a crew from the Drainage Commission, and the matter was handed over to scientists. Over several decades of excavation history, the remains of approximately 300 mastodons, extinct relatives of elephants, have been found and their excellent preservation was aided by the cold environment with low oxygen content at the bottom of a pond. These are typical conditions that help convey organic remains of prehistoric animals to our days. A remarkable discovery took place in the Estonian backcountry in 2000. A World War II tank was pulled out of a bog. The massive machine was extracted from its muddy grave. Since the tank sank to the bottom of the marshy bank of a local lake and spent over half a century under a 10-ton, approximately 11 U.S. tons, layer of mud, time stood still for it. A boy noticed the tank, recognizing the tracks sticking out of the water. He then examined the lakeshore and found traces indicating the presence of an armored vehicle. Miraculously, he was right. The murky shores concealed a Soviet T-34 tank captured by the German army during the battles of 1944, hence the German swastika visible on it. The head of the local military history club initiated an expedition to raise the tank, requiring heavy machinery, a massive bulldozer and significant efforts from the local residents. Surprisingly, the raised tank was in great condition. Even without rust, all of its systems worked, except of course the engine and 116 shells were still intact. If it weren't for that observant boy, the tank would have never seen daylight and received the recognition it deserved. We've learned that bogs are excellent repositories for the most incredible things, so the next time you visit Marshland, know that it might be a cabinet of curiosities for a museum that has yet to be opened. So, these were the most incredible things found in bogs. If you enjoyed our latest compilation and was to continue watching most of our videos, we have specially selected some of the most interesting episodes for you on the Top Facts channel.